Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to week two of the Ripple Effect podcast. This is a podcast, the Timberlake Christian Church, letting you know kind of behind the scenes some things going on in the church that you need to be aware of and uh, to spotlight some people in our congregation. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm here with Brian and uh, Drew Johnson. We'll get to him in a little bit. Uh, but before we begin, I just want to let you know that today's episode is sponsored. Uh, it's sponsored by Lifesavers. Can you imagine going to church and not having mints in the morning? I know that you say you brush your teeth, but this is really a lifesaver when you come to church and you've forgotten to. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Sponsor of the week, Lifesavers. We're excited about it. Uh, we're happy you're here with us, and we hope that today will be encouraging for you, informative, uh, and help you feel like you are part of the family. Uh, we're so glad to be uh, here today. We're going to recap first the uh, week, the previous Sunday. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, TLCC's top three, which are the top three things you need to know about coming up. Uh, and then we're going to have a weekly spotlight um, to introduce you to uh, Andrew and, um, and some of the things that we have going on. So that's what's going on today, and we hope that you're going to uh, love it. Uh, first, recap of the previous week. We had Sunday. Things didn't go perfectly. It was a week that some things didn't go that well for me. Um, Brian, talk a little bit about your sermon. You preached on Sunday. How did it feel for you? What you, do you think about it? Um, yeah, overall, I thought uh, Sunday went pretty well. We, Yeah, there were some glitches, but I mean, there's things like that every single week. I'll, I'll, a lot of time they aren't that noticeable. The but, ones that yeah, whether bug people me, know it or not, yeah. the ones that bug me a lot of times aren't things that most people would think about. Just something that doesn't go like we plan. This week, um, well, about the sermon itself, I felt prepared. I had run through it many times and all that. But beyond that part of it, uh, I was happy to see the response. You know, at the end, I gave people a little challenge. We always challenge people with things. But sometimes when you, I think when you do a, a challenge where you're expecting something tangible like immediately, right now. as a preacher we sometimes worry about, oh, what if nobody does this? Like what if, what if we, you know, put this out there and then like three people do the post-it <laughs> notes and yeah, and sometimes that happens and you just learn to move, move on. But this week, obviously not everybody took the challenge to actually fill out the post-it note right then but we got a lot of them I didn't count them I mean I have a whole stack of them on my desk and I brought a few I think they're in my back pocket uh, and I was going to go through a few of them because I thought there's probably a few of you out there that um, you're like me and you actually need more time to think about something like this and and I, I put the challenge out there and said do this right now and yet even for me I would write something down, but then I would keep thinking about it. That was my question, is before you read those, did you do the challenge yourself? Well, I mean, I've done this several times okay. before, but as far as this week, I was thinking, obviously, about, well, uh, and we have a like a church-wide vision we're about to kind of cast for the next year, and I won't spoil that, because that's, that's a couple weeks away, but... What my post-it note is about is about that, so I don't want to get too detailed, but it's about me helping fulfill yeah. what we're going to be challenging everybody else to do. Um, so maybe in you know, a couple weeks from now, I'll share I figured it. you did. I figured yeah. you did. Um, but like, yeah, I, as ministers, you know, you would think we're thinking about things like this all the time, mm -hmm. but even a lot of times I get kind of in the weeds or, you know, you can get caught up on all the little things that have to happen every week. Mm -hmm. And it's it's good for us to think like big picture. And so that's what I you know, we're we're gonna be challenging everybody to do that um in a couple weeks. Yeah. Um so you got so a couple notes here. Some the, things that were written. Yeah. The post it notes that I pulled out are just some good examples. Um some of them uh and obviously these weren't for us to understand everything behind it. I, I said that in the sermon. But for people that weren't there, um, you know, we talked about not comparing ourselves against others, looking for the benchmark God set for us and chasing after that. Um, so that's 
that's the gist of where what I hope people are taking away from it. And the post-it note was just one way that we can get at that. What what is it? And 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 so I talked about desire and passions. Uh, these are all things that play into you know finding our purpose that God's given us, our desire and our passions, um, past experiences that we've had. Uh, often play into that ways that we can help others because we've been through something um, our talents and our gifts and our abilities that God's given us and then looking for the gaps we see because a lot of times if you notice a gap and I'm talking in the church and ministries we have here or outside the church walls you know in, in the community a lot of times if if you're the one noticing this gap and complaining somebody's not doing this that might be a place that God's calling you to help fill that gap. And so the first one I pulled out, uh, you know, selfishly is one um, that I wanted to read. Uh, somebody wrote, help Rachel, Jessica, and they must have forgot Macy's name because it says Mrs. Daniel. Mrs. Daniel? Help Mrs. Daniel. That's the first lady is what that's By helping with our kids. <laughs> By helping with our kids and freezing meals for us to deliver. Whoa, so yes. I'm like, I'm all about that. Okay, one. <laughs> absolutely. I like that. Uh, so I, I said some people will write a book and some people will write one word and that's what happened. Some people literally wrote one word and this person wrote heal. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I mean, that, that it's, I was thinking about that. I'm like, yeah, sometimes we have people here that are just in a, a phase of healing or grieving something or whatever it is and before they can move on to fulfilling God's purpose next year they might just be in a phase of healing and, and other people ministering to them and that's that's yeah. fun and that's interesting because sometimes we think like what can I do what can I do and sometimes you just need to be to heal so you can yeah be healthy enough to help yeah it's powerful um, I talked about one lady in the church, and this is her post-it note. She wrote several things on here, but um, it's a lady who's had family members in prison and just feeling the desire, the calling to go into the prison herself and be involved in that in that ministry. And I thought that was really cool. Um, somebody that wouldn't have been like the first person I would have thought about in our church that would answer the call to to yeah. help in the prison and yet it makes sense because it's that past experience mm -hmm. piece of it and she was already thinking about this before yesterday or before Sunday mm -hmm. but it just sort of solidified for her yeah. this is something I need to look into and there was somebody that put like decorating artistic stuff you know looking for ways to use that connecting with women who seem to be on the fringe or loosely connected mm -hmm. Uh, somebody, you know, feeling like they might help, be able to help answer that call. Somebody wrote, um, uh, knowing that basketball is a good tool to impact others for the kingdom. Yeah. Um, foreign students and English as a second language. Friendships and hospitality. I mean, we've talked about this as a staff, that, you know, a huge piece of us connecting with people is just hospitality. I mean, honestly, mm -hmm. the winter green mint and having them there, having people to talk to people when they come up to get a mint. That seemed like such a small thing. Yeah. And yet we sat through a whole conference, like three-day conference about wow. things like that, about being hospitable. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a whole ministry at our church designed around that. And that obviously should extend beyond our walls, you know, mm -hmm. getting people in our home. We were just talking about, um, you know, ways to do that with our neighbors in the office a few minutes ago. Um so I have, you know, a lot of others. Graphic, somebody that's done video and graphic design, but not done that here with the church or, um, for you know, help fulfill one of the purposes we have here. Uh, someone, and, and these were two that kind of went together, just spending time with family at home, ministering to my family, loving my wife better. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, I'll probably stop there because I don't want to read all these. But, oh, the last one, I did have one more. Um, I want to commit to being a foster parent mm -hmm. just because that's something my wife and I have been involved in. I thought that was cool. I didn't even talk about that Sunday, but it's been on somebody's heart. Yeah. And I just think my challenge 
whether you even hear Sunday or not, if you're watching this, is keep thinking about that because a lot of what we're going to talk about in the next, um, what, six weeks, mm -hmm. but especially on the 29th as we do the Stay of the Church Address and launch the next year's vision, has to do, I mean, I did that purposefully. It's sort of priming me and everyone here for some of the things we're wanting to talk about. I, I love hearing those. For a different reason, it, for me, it's a reminder that everybody's thinking and going through something, and God's working on different people's heart in different ways. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes it's easy for me to kind of get in a bubble of I got to do these certain things, and you forget that there's a God's moving and working in people's lives and challenging them. And so I thought it was really. I thought really it cool. might be cool to like, even if I don't type up each individual one, like to do a Facebook post or something about you know. Because a lot of them have a similar theme. Like there were three or four that said something about fostering. Mm. Um, there were several that said things like hospitality, showing compassion. Mm. There were several that mentioned people that are on the fringe yeah. and aren't <coughs> connected. Yeah. That's so, it. so like, I got a question about it. Like, so how is it for you reading each one one by one? Like after preaching a sermon, yeah, that impacts when then you go read how it challenged people. For well, life? Sunday. Um, I didn't have time to read them right afterwards. I wanted to just like go right in my office and see how people responded. So I just did that this morning when I came in because I was out of the office yesterday. And I don't know, part of it is like, okay, God did use this. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it was a, you know, fulfillment of some of the vision of what I hoped would happen with that. I talked about in the sermon that we had done something kind of like this years ago. And that I had heard stories about people, particularly Mark Morgan, I mentioned, um, who had been impacted by it. It's such a simple thing. I mean, there's nothing that special about the exercise. It's just a matter of we asked everyone to do this in a service at that time mm -hmm. and didn't just challenge them to go home and do it. It's like right here, right now, yes. you can do something. Um, but I I kind of agree with him. Like, I... And I enjoyed looking at all of the variety of ways that people are challenged because uh, we kind of have a we have a similar mission and purpose but we all fulfill that in a different way yeah. and and also our those those burdens we have which that's another word I should have used with um, passion I think because yeah, that's a different that goes along with passion for me but burden is different it's not just like I like to travel. Burden is like this is something that that I need to do because God has given me this special place in my spirit for whatever it is. Um, there were people that mentioned uh, animals, you know, taking care of the environment. We had those things written on these post-it notes that I wouldn't have expected all those. And what and the other thing was um, just realizing I don't have to. I, this is from the ministerial side. I don't have to know the names behind those. Only two people actually put their name on there. Yeah. Uh, well, one of them wasn't even the person's name, but they mentioned someone else's name in it, and that told me who it was. <laughs> they wrote it because of what they wrote down. But um, as a minister, it's nice to know like what's on the hearts of our people. Not just so we like preach at them or something, yeah. but, but like you... You get a sense of what is our congregation collectively feeling and how are they burdened because I mean we are our church is those individuals like it's not its own thing we are the church and so however they're burdened is somewhat like where we should all be heading as a staff too well that's why I was going to make the comment like Sunday for me so many things didn't go well uh, we <laughs> talked about uh, the little baby girl that had a, a concussion she's doing well i hope so i hope you all saw the post uh brindley's doing well and she's back home uh and they are very grateful for the prayers but you know that kind of threw everything off you have your piano players out your drummers distracted uh you have to add in different people um i was distracted um i've got this eye thing going on that's <laughs> distracting and and you know <clears throat> there are some sundays where you still have to get up you still have to preach you still have to share um and it can be difficult to be like feeling like you're present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then 
you know, then you're hearing some of those, you're like, oh, everybody has that. <laughs> everybody yeah. has things in their life that they're bringing uh, to the church. And so uh, it's a good reminder that we're all going through stuff. And I like what you said about how this is the church, uh, and it's a reminder that we're not alone in it. So yeah. it's good. Okay, we need to get to TLCC top three. The top three things you need to know about going on this coming week. Um, I'm going to do the first one. You mm -hmm. take the second one and the third one because I don't know much Okay. <laughs> okay, the first one is Wednesday night groups are starting back up tomorrow night here at uh, Timberlake Christian Church. What also is going on in coinciding with that is uh, small groups are starting back up. And the best way for you to figure out where you want to fit, what you want to do, uh, is to go to the app. So you go to your church center app. Uh, and go to Timberlake Christian Church. Hopefully it's already logged in for you. And you'll see, click on groups, and you'll see all the groups there. The Wednesday night classes, all of them are there that are offered. And then uh, you'll also see the small groups uh, that are available for you. Uh, we call them grow groups, growth, growth mm -hmm. groups. <laughs> Good. I should probably know the name of them. <laughs> growth groups. And uh, if you're wanting to sign up for this semester, uh, it's a great place for you to do it. Wednesday nights start up at 6.30. Tomorrow night, they go from 6.30 to 8. Uh, there's everything for every person. So you've got nursery up to high school. Uh, you've got men's classes, women's classes, uh, Bible study groups. Uh, there's something for everyone. And I'm excited to get back with people and to get back to studying together and fellowshipping with, with one another. So that's the first thing you need to know about. Mm -hmm. Number two. Okay. Right now, media, it kind of goes along with that because some of our groups and classes use something called Right Now Media. It's something the church subscribes to, and because of that, anybody, you don't have to be a member. You don't even have to come every Sunday or anything. You, you have access to it just because you're connected to our church in some way. You can even be an online attendee and, and never have shown up here in the last two months in person and have access to Right Now Media. It's very simple. Well, first of all, uh, and this is what's on the slide out there, it's kind of the slogan is the Netflix of Christian Bible study. Pretty much it. It's not all Bible study, though. There are lots of uh, kids' videos and series. Um, so don't take it that it's all like um, lecturing or something like that. There's conferences on there where... They've just taken the main sessions and put them out there for you to... Worship stuff. There's music yeah. stuff on there. So anyway, right now, media, you can get it. Go to our website, tlcc.church, and right there on the homepage is an orange button that says right now, media, or get right now, media. It You just really put your name and your email address, and, and then you're signed up. It's very simple. Yeah. And anytime we're doing a study, you know, like if Daniel has a class that's using right now, media... What's great about it is if you miss one of those, you can still just watch on your own on your phone. Mm -hmm. Like our smart TV has the Right Now Media app, so you can get it that way. Um, but anyway, we wanted to talk about that because you may be newer to the church. And like our Wednesday night group uh, is in the coffee bar, the guys group. Um, and we're doing Kyle Eidelman's Not a Fan. Well, it's on there. There's usually even some questions that go along with it. And then, of course, if you want to buy the book or something, you can do that. So that's uh, Right Now Media. The last uh, of the top three we wanted to talk about was something we emailed out. And um, I'm going to get this in front of me so I give the right info. Can't get the right info. Should have brought Cheryl in for this, I guess. But our counseling ministry hosts and facilitates several different groups. Many people don't know about them because they're not in a season of life where they're going through this issue or whatever it is. But um, something that anybody's welcome at, at is something called Mental Health First Aid. Um, it's this week. The 22nd is... Uh, is that? It's, we should know what day it is, but I don't. Well, he's looking that up. It's the Mental Health First Aid is... 22nd next Sunday, right? Next Sunday. Yeah. It's when someone's in a disaster situation or in a crisis, uh, we want to be present, but we, we don't always know what to say or what to do. And this gives you some tools in your toolbox to know how to best administer this kind of first aid mm -hmm. uh, mentally for someone who's going through a crisis. It's a really great program. It'll give you a lot of great tools and a lot of great um, 
information and skills that you'll need to help people around you. So. Yeah. So you need to pre-register and uh, you know if you know Cheryl Botkins, our counseling ministry, you can email her, Cheryl, at tlcc.church or um, call into the office. Um, it's going to be here in room 404. It's a six-hour event, so 1 to 7 p.m. on the 22nd. Yeah. So um, we told her we would highlight that today, and she says you can read more about it at mentalhealthfirstaid.org if you're uh, wondering more details before you sign up or commit to come to that. Yeah, it is a big time commitment, but if you've ever gone through a situation where you're trying to help someone with their mental health, you all, you know that one of the first thoughts you have is, I don't want to mess this up. I don't want to make it worse. Um, and just like coming into a situation where someone's having, like they're bleeding out or you know they need first aid, um, you don't want to do something that's going to make it worse. And so this it is a big commitment, but it's worth it. Uh, because the tools that they give you are going to help go a long way to help you, not just for your family, but for everyone you come in contact with. So, mm -hmm. so anyway, it says pre-register by the 18th, so that would be tomorrow. 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 So Get it done. You got to do, yeah. uh, so Wednesday night starting up, if you want to access right now media, go to tlcc.church and you'll see the button to click. And then the mental health uh, first aid, which is on the 22nd of uh, this month. All right, we want to move into a weekly spotlight, and we are just highlighting either a particular person or ministry or something that we think is worthwhile to highlight for you. Uh, and this week, I asked Drew to join us. Uh, Drew has been uh, my intern, uh, preaching intern for, I don't even know how long it's been now. <laughs> for like two and a half? It's like two, oh. yeah. It's got to be a little while. Drew was <laughs> at Central Christian College of the Bible. He started just as an internship for his school. And that continued on through the summer, and then uh, uh, we can't get rid of him yet. So, <laughs> um, so I just thought it'd be cool for him to come on and share a little bit about uh, himself. We get you give you a chance to get to know him a little bit. So, Drew, uh, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how'd you end up in Mobile? Um, I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Well, I was born in Chicago. We moved to Memphis when I was 14, going to my first year of high school, and I did high school all throughout there. Then I went to college up in Minnesota, played basketball there for two years, and then I transferred to Central Christian. Um, I don't know how I ended up there. I just applied to a bunch of schools, and I was like <laughs> one of the only ones that emailed me back. So I ended up there, and for the first two years, it was kind of like I didn't take the Bible stuff seriously, and it was like that last year and a half, I really got deep into it, and I found out that I got a passion for preaching, and that's what like brought me to this point at Timberlake. Mm -hmm. And like the internship thing was crazy because remember we kept doing it mm -hmm. and like we had fill out the hour sheets and they had like you didn't sign the paperwork at, the f at first so it don't count. Everything kept Yeah, up. it messed up like three times yeah. and I guess like it was a purpose behind it because if I would have finished the internship I don't think I would have been here right now. Mm -hmm. So I guess mm -hmm. it was a purpose in all the headaches that we went through. Mm -hmm. I think there's a sermon in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, tell us a little bit about your family. You've got some brothers. Uh, what's your family like? Um, I got an older sister, an older brother, and a younger brother. Uh, me and my two brothers happened to play at Central together for one year. Mm -hmm. And my other brother went off to Ozark, and my younger Trader. brother. Yes, Trader. Trader. <laughs> That's true. He went over to Ozark, and then uh, my younger brother still is at Central currently, mm -hmm. where he is uh, finishing his degree. Yeah. And, um, I mean, my family not really exciting or anything. We just play <laughs> basketball. <laughs> your, uh, uh, but your family's most of them are still. In, uh, your parents are still in Memphis. Yeah, they still in Memphis. Is your sister there? I don't know. No, she lived in Iowa. The Bill Iowa. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Hmm. That's cool. Um, so you've been in Moberly now for several years. Yeah. It's been five years, four years, four, four, four years. Four you've years. been in Moberly. Um, what's been I, he didn't know I was going to ask him these questions. What's been the thing that like you've appreciated and enjoyed the most about being here? What's been like the most I don't know, frustrating or difficult thing about being here? So the, the I'm going to start with the most frustrating thing. Because I'm from a big city. So coming to a small town in Mobley, like I know 13,000 for some people is big. But when you're from a city of like 50 to 100,000, yeah. like, it's nothing to do here. Like Some people feel like 
a fun night is going to Walmart. And Listen, <laughs> man, you get your boots on, all right? And you go pick up your girl, yeah. and you go to Walmart. Go to Walmart. <laughs> That's what people think is fun. But in the city, we got so many options to where, like, I can do anything on a Friday or Saturday night. Yeah, but no, here it's like... It's shut down by seven. It is. <laughs> and, like, Walmart closed here. In Memphis, we, it's 24 hours, so I could go there at 2 a.m. It was like 11. It's closed. It's weird. Yeah, I just want to go on record saying that nothing good happens at Walmart at 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just want to go on record to say that. Yeah. yeah that is frustrating. Um, I think that's just part of, you know, what you deal with in a small town. Yeah. This, I've told you, this is the biggest town I've ever lived in. Mm-hmm. Wow. So this, Mobile is like a metropolis to yeah. me because we have a Walmart in town, which is like huge. Like, I used to have to drive, anyway. Yeah, you're from a town that just got a Dollar General. Dollar General, that's it. Every time. Every time got a Dollar General. Okay, so then what's been, that's frustrating, what's been a positive thing? Right? The most positive thing I can say, it's also coming from a big city, it's a higher crime rate there. Mobile is not crime, so like, I don't have to lock my house doors, like my car doors and stuff. Like, that security and peace of mind that I get here is like top notch to me. Like, I wouldn't trade that for anything else. Mm-hmm. Like, that's one of my favorite things about being just in mobility as a whole. Mm-hmm. It's like, and I live like across the street from my job mm-hmm. and everybody that I need is like down the street right there. So it's, that's, that's a mm-hmm. positive for me. Yeah, it's kind of a cool community. Um, although, it's not completely without crime because, uh, no. you know, we just replaced the Cadillac yeah, right. on the van. But no you know, time. it's not really, I was telling people it was only two times. It's three, isn't three it? Three times. Yeah, the silver van, the white van, and the red van yep. all got hit. Yeah. yeah. Somebody sold it from the market. Did they? Yeah. I'll tell you what, they're going everywhere. So if if you are watching this and you're part of that crew, stop it, please. That's just not helping anybody. We have a surprise for them next time they show <laughs> Hey, we do have a surprise for them. <laughs> We're not going to tell you what that surprise is. Um, all right, so tell, just, last question here. What you, You've you preached several times here mm-hmm. at Tim Lakers Church. Uh, we've all appreciated and loved your passion and, and how you presented God's word. But you're still relatively new at preaching, yeah. right? So this has only been the last, really, two years coming on strong, yeah. right? What is it about preaching to you, about sharing God's Word, about the art of preaching that has captivated you? So I think that, like, the art of it is a, is a whole thing that people don't understand. Like, it's an art to it. You can't just get up there and write something on the paper and be like, God bless this, and hope <laughs> that it go well. Like, you really got to put in the time and prepare and, and craft this, and like, I heard it said like this, like 20 hours a week on a sermon, if you want it to be good, like, and still it's time when you put in 20 hours and you get up there and flop, and because it just happened, like, and I know I've only been preaching for like a year and a half, and like, like I told you, we, we talked about it, that last message that I gave her, I felt like it wasn't a, a good message, like, and I went he home. He was complaining, yeah, whining. Yeah. I was, I was, I was, I was upset about it, like. Because I feel like I could I could have did better. Because I always feel like preaching is a chance for me to give God my best. Mm. And when I don't feel like I gave God my best, I feel like I cheated him out of an opportunity. Mm. So like when I got off that stage Sunday, I know it was wrong, but I was so in my head that I, I didn't even go take communion because I was so frustrated. Like, mm. man, how am I worthy to take this when I squandered an opportunity to preach his word? Mm. And that's the frustrating part. I don't know if y'all go through that sometimes, like the frustration of it, mm. but like, the rewarding part is when you see people like impacted. Like what Brian said with the notes and stuff, like that is so impactful. Yeah. Like somebody just writing something as simple as healed on there, like that hit me hard because like you got all these big goals for this year, but the main goal should be stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. And that's the part that's so rewarding to me is seeing how God is working through us to help his people. Yeah. Like but it's good days and bad days. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> no, I totally get that. I totally understand walking off the stage thinking, "Man, I totally botched that, <laughs> and that was that that flopped." And uh, some of the most humiliating or humbling parts of preaching is realizing you can put your best effort forward, but God is the one that works on people's hearts. Yeah, and that's another reason I think this is so good is you you're seeing, like, we get the chance to share God's word for 30 minutes once a week but the holy spirit is working in people's lives all the time mm-hmm. and uh so it's i told him i said you know 
knock it off. You're not that big of a deal. <laughs> God can still work. Yeah. Right? Like, I'll tell him stuff that I don't listen to myself. Um, I need to take my own medicine sometimes. But, uh, you, yeah, it's the reminder that God is the one working and moving. And I'm going to put my best into it. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the blessing of preaching, but also the difficult part mm-hmm. is, like, I'm going to give my all, but it's not about me. Yeah. You know? And, it, and God's using what I've gone through and the things that I'm thinking about uh, even those desires, passions, talents, all those things. And I'm going to share what I believe he's put on my heart. But at the end of the day, it's just an offering mm-hmm. that he's got to do something. With. So yeah. anyway, well, there you go. There's a little inside information about Drew. Uh, Drew, give him one like little tidbit about a personal thing about you that nobody else would know. Like, uh, I don't know, what's your favorite candy? What do you, I don't know, what do you snack on? Something that, something that people need to know about you. I want to snack on a lot of stuff. We're a big snack fan? Yeah. I got to stop it so I don't <laughs> gain a bunch of weight. But I don't know. Something cool is like I'm really into like, superhero and comic book stuff. Oh. Mm-hmm. People people would find it kind of lame. Like, I really like chess and stuff like that. But I don't share that too much. <laughs> He's got the brain and the bronze. Yeah. Uh, is that what that is? Like, I'm a, I'm a athlete. I was, used to be athlete, so people don't see that side. Listen, we've never played each other in chess. It's going to have to happen. You know what I mean? No, it's going to have to happen. I was literally like in chess competition. Like, that's what I think. <laughs> Do you think I'm scared of you? It is. I'm not scared of you. All right. <laughs> well, if you want to challenge Drew in a chess match, I, I would encourage you to do that. <laughs> Let me give you the uh, the blessing of the week, the encouragement of the week. Um, I, I've shared this with several people, and it seems kind of a, a, a continual theme uh, that's uh, that's gone on um, through throughout many people's lives. Uh, that I've been talking to recently, and that is, some people are wondering, like, what? I'm trying to do these things for God, and I'm trying to follow after Him, and I'm just wondering, what's it all for? And I, I don't know if it's midlife crisis for some people, uh, or for some of us, I don't know if it's a generational thing that we're reaching an age where we're starting to see maybe some things that we don't like, but we're not sure how to change it, and and we sometimes can get overwhelmed by how much is out there uh, and and overwhelmed by you know God's asking me to do all these things and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do so I was talking with my wife and she is much smarter than I am and wiser than I am and I was talking about this coming Sunday and I'm talking about generations I'm gonna go back to our generational series and we're talking about um, the different challenges that each generation face is actually pretty much the same challenge is will you be obedient with what comes next mm-hmm. and we we're talking about how sometimes the world feels so big and you really like you want to you want to be the change and you want to help everybody and you want you see all these things that need to take place and and it feels so overwhelming it's like this world is too big the the the, the problems in the church are too difficult problems in people's lives too too difficult like it just seems way too big and then my wife said I said it just seems like sometimes the world is too big to change and she said so shrink your world change the size of your world and I was like huh that's a good thought and it kind of coincides with a lot of things we've been talking about with uh, some of our vision for the future of this year and about how we reach those around us and uh, so the blessing comes from uh, the parable that Jesus told of the talents you know the man goes on a trip he gives his servants a different number of talents according to their own abilities and gifts uh, to one he gives five, to one he gives two, the other he gives one, and he goes on this trip. And the individuals, the servants, they take their talents and they all do something different with them. The one who does, has five talents, uh, works and invests and does something, he multiplies them, doubles it. The one with two talents does the same thing. He uses the talents, doubles it. The one with one talent gets a little nervous, scared, and he buries his talent in the ground. And the master, when he comes back, is so frustrated with that one who buried his talent he, he tells him, like, the reason I'm so frustrated is because you, you didn't even know who I was. I would have rather you invest it, try to do something and failed, than just bury your talent in the sand. Um, and the point is, God has given each of us a world that we get to influence and that we get to uh, work in and that we get to show his love to. And, and we may not be able to change the universe or America or even... Sometimes when you're in a part of a bigger church, like you might feel like, I see these things in the church I want to change, it's too big. Uh, so shrink your world. 
shrink the size of your world and recognize uh, who is it around me, what talents has God given me, and the people He's used, uh, given me to influence uh, that that I can impact. We all, you know, people that are close to us. If you have family, if you have children, if you have friends, um, and trust that when you use your talents for the glory of God, it's going to be enough. And that's the point, is it's not about I've got to double what I can do, I've got to be the best at this. It's just, no, use what God has given you for His glory, even if that means just focusing on the world that you have right around you, and trust that it's going to be enough. Because one person can change another life, and that can shape a generation. I don't know if uh, I've shared this story before about my dad, but my, my parents are first-generation Christians. Uh, you know, I don't, my, my grandparents and their grandparents, they weren't like Christians. Um, and my dad was a salesman, he sold insurance, and he went to his neighbor's house to sell him insurance, and that neighbor preached to him Jesus, and that changed the course of their life. Wow. So I'm a, I'm a Christian, and my children will grow up in a Christian household because one guy shared a message with another guy. And this one guy, I was telling somebody, it's not like he was the best Christian. He ended up uh, cheating on his wife and having some issues and like it's not like he was like the top stellar preacher it was just a guy who decided to influence his world and so the blessing this week is when you use what God has given you to encourage and love the world that you have around you uh, in the name of Jesus is going to be enough and uh, you may never see the fruits of it but when we trust in God he's going to he's going to cause the break so that's it for this week uh, the Ripple Effects podcast. We can't wait to see you next week with a new spotlight, with a new TLCC top three. And uh, we hope that uh, you are encouraged and we pray that God continues to work in your life this week. God bless. <laughs>